was dating in high school a waste of time? Here is today's email question. Hi, Pastor John. My name is Josh, a high school student. I desire to date. Most people who I value as close friends and God-loving people say that it's mostly pointless and dumb to date in high school. Yet many strong and godly couples I know who have been married for many years met and dated in high school. So is dating in high school foolish but occasionally fruitful? Or is it potentially a good place to find a strong and godly spouse? What would you say about dating in high school for today's teens? Before I say anything about dating in high school today, let me say a couple of things about the older generations that that he may be talking about. Once upon a time, young people married much more commonly at age 17, 18, 19, or even earlier in some cultures. My parents were 19 and 18 when they married. There was a time when the cultural expectations and the cultural support were in place partly to prepare young people to marry that early and partly to provide the structures and help after they got married. That's not as true today in America as it once was. That's the first thing. The second thing I want to say about the other generation, my generation perhaps, um, is that many parents today who did marry quite early would still counsel their young people today not to pair off in dating relationships during high school. In other words, it doesn't follow that because godly people you know married early, that dating early is a good idea. That needs to be decided on other grounds. So whether you see dating at age 15, 16, 17 as wise— will depend partly on your view of sexual relations and partly on your view of the meaning of dating and partly on your view of the relative maturity of teenagers. And I think the Bible settles the question of sexual relations for us clearly, namely, sexual relations are for marriage. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 7, 2, because of the temptation to sexual immorality, Each man should have his own wife and each woman her own husband. In other words, sexual relations are for the marriage covenant, not for the engaged couple and not for casual dating relationships. That view will, of course, set a Christian young person wonderfully and wildly apart from the view that is pervasive in culture and in media namely that it is perfectly acceptable to have sex outside marriage with the one provision that it be consensual. That's not what the Bible teaches, and it's not what God's design for man and woman is, and it will bear tragic fruit in your life. There is something else to know about sexuality, and we know it from experience, we know it from history, namely, one of the most powerful forces in human life is the awakening of a peculiar happiness and desire that come from being liked by a person of the opposite sex. I have watched otherwise strong and wise and seemingly mature Christian young people completely lose their moral bearings when they find out that they are liked, that they are attractive to an unbeliever. It's as if every switch on the mainframe of their moral life gets turned off, but one massive desire button is alive and well. I want, want, want to be with this person who likes me so much. It's a frightening power to watch because of how blinding it is to wisdom and scripture and Christ and long-term implications. It's a kind of moral insanity, I feel sometimes. This is true for people in their 20s and 30s and 40s. And I don't assume that, that teenagers are any more equipped than these folks in their maturity and life experience to encounter that kind of 
power and risk. And so the question needs to be asked, what is dating? What's it for? And I assume what Josh is asking about is young men and women in their teenage years, like 15, 16, 17 years old, doing things together one-on-one because they especially like each other. So that, that's the meaning of dating. I'm, I'm assuming he, he has doing things together one on one because they especially like each other. And as soon as they have done a few things together, homework, ball game, going out to eat, as soon as they've done a few things together for that reason, the feeling arises that there should be a little bit of specialness in the relationship that implies He doesn't do this with a lot of other girls, and she doesn't do this with a lot of other boys. In other words, pretty quickly, to people who are doing things together because they like each other, they're going to feel some sense of proprietary action here, some possessiveness, a kind of of, of desire for some special focus or qualified commitment, not marriage, not engagement, but something, you know, we've invented words for that, like my generation going steady or whatever today. Now, that seems to imply something that to me is just absolutely natural. I mean, that, that sequence uh, is almost inevitable in such relationships. Seem, they seem perfectly natural and good. That's how relationships move from acquaintance to dating to engagement to marriage. It's normal, not evil. That's more or less the way our culture does it. So the question becomes, is it wise for a 16-year-old to step into that river that flows towards marriage? And my answer is no. (laughs) I don't think it is wise. Um, I can imagine... I'm going to make an exception here. I can imagine an exceptional situation in our culture where two young people are extraordinarily mature and spiritual and marriage is planned for age 18, right after high school. But that would be, it seems to me, a remarkable exception that proves the wisdom of the rule, namely that the maturity level of teenagers is not great enough to make such massive decisions. And marriage at the early age of 18 can create enormous burdens on the couple that they may not be able or ready for, namely schooling, vocation, childbearing, childrearing. So the principle, it seems to me, that wisdom calls for is to postpone dating to the point where there is a significant measure of spiritual maturity and life experience and a readiness to move towards marriage. And what what I think that implies for high school is that young people be encouraged to do things in groups that include both young men, young women, but that they hold back from pairing off. And and I would encourage Josh and other teenagers who might be listening that if they don't see the wisdom in this, uh, you should listen carefully to your parents and follow their counsel. Uh, Falling in love is one of the greatest experiences in the world. I was just rereading a letter I wrote to Noel from seminary three months before we were married. Good night, I had forgotten how massively I loved her in a a powerfully sexual and romantic way. It is a beautiful thing. It's a wonderful thing to fall in love. And what makes it so great is that God has blessed it with an appointed and thrilling consummation called marriage. And if you turn that that process into a high school pastime with revolving relationships, you are robbing yourself of the very best you can have. Wow. Amen. The answer ended with an exclamation point. Thank you, Pastor John. And thanks for listening and uh, making the podcast a part of your day 
uh, three times a week we publish. And you can subscribe to our audio feeds and keep up with our new episodes and search our past episodes in our archive. Even reach us by email with a question you may be facing about life. Like this very good one from Josh. Josh, thank you for the question. Do all of that through our online home at desiringgod.org forward slash ask Pastor John. Well, Friday, we talked about the difference between unholy anger and holy anger. When we return on Wednesday, we're going to look more closely at anger and its destructive force inside of the home. There's a a really sharp question from a female listener that has come in, and that is next on the podcast. I'm your host, Tony Ranke. We'll see you on Wednesday.